<laughs> oh, fuck. Oh, I'm sorry, man. You getting somebody else? Oh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> Today is Wednesday, so that means it is competition training. Monday, Wednesday, Friday are like the hardest days of the week. We do a pretty, pretty tough training session today, so it's good though. It's gonna be a good day. It's just a grind. It's just a grind on uh, on comp class. It's a lot of it's a lot of live training today. A lot of situationals. Um, Right now, because I'm in training camp, Kyle's gonna set up the training in a way that's gonna be really challenging for me. A lot of guys probably rotating in on me and long rounds, stuff like that. So it's gonna be a grind, but these are actually the days that I look forward to the most. You know, the, the, the lighter days, the lighter training sessions, it's kind of like boring, you know? The more challenging days are always gonna be more fun. Yeah, um, the next competition that I'm doing is the Spokane Submission Challenge and uh, it's gonna be the first time uh, I believe that they're doing super fights. Um, there's a guy named Adam Smith that's running the promotion, and uh, he's doing a really good job, man. I think he's gonna gonna build it, and over time, it's gonna be um, a really great show. From what I've seen, even their first their first event's gonna be really great. So um, I'm excited. Yeah, I'm excited to be part of it, and uh, coming in prepared. There's six of us that, um, from CTA that are gonna be competing. Um, me, Tamara. Tamara is um, one of our female black belts. She's a very high level competitor. She's um, won the Pan Ams at black belt adult. Um, she's gotten second place at the world championships at, at black belt adult. So she's she's really tough. She's on the come up right now. She's she's in that area that's like right before breaking out into becoming like a big name in jujitsu. So I definitely think in the next 12 months, people are really gonna start knowing who she is. Um, she's very talented. Um, and then on top of that, we have Ed, um, Troy, Benji, and Elias, who are four of our competitors, all super tough guys. Um, they're all competing in, you know, the big IBJJF tournaments, ADCC trials, um, all the big events. So there's six of us total. And, uh, yeah, we're just coming to showcase our jiu-jitsu, and we're coming to showcase CTA. And then on top of that, you know, because there's six of us that are all competing on the card, um, that intensity is gonna be raised for everyone in the training room. So it's not like it's just me that's competing. Whenever you have a, a whole squad of people competing, everyone just feeds and builds off each other. So we're all coming in focused and, and uh, we're all coming in working hard every day. Beautiful day, baby. California, let's go. We gotta get new doors, bro. Steak and white rice. If you wanna be strong as fuck, you gotta eat steak and white rice. What do you guys season with? I'm white, bro. We don't season. We don't season our food. <laughs> well, right now I'm trying to. I'm trying to bulk, so I'm eating like uh, higher carbs, minimum like. 400 grams of carbs a day. Then of course, high protein, like 220 grams a day, 240 grams a day. And just keeping the fats a little bit lower right now, just cause I'm on like such high carbs. I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get a little bigger. So uh, waking up in the morning, waking up in the morning, like 220, walking around probably 225, but I want to get up to like 230. Definitely. Um, with the higher carbs, I do find myself forcing myself to eat a little bit more. Like normally, uh, whenever I'm eating, when I, when I have my meals planned out, I'm, when I'm done with the meal, I'm full, you know? But now, like, I feel full, like, halfway through the meal. And then I have to, like, take a break, like, take a breath, and then be like, all right, let's finish and eat all these fucking carbs, man. For me personally, the diet is, like, probably 70% because 
if I'm training hard and I'm really pushing myself and my diet is shit, then I feel like I'm just going to get injured. I'm just going to be slow and sluggish. I'm not going to perform well. So the diet has to be on point and then the training will keep building and building and building. But if the diet's not on point, you're not going to be able to push to that level. Now that's me personally. I've also seen some guys that their diets are complete shit and then they're still able to push and train and compete at a high level. But me, that's just not me. I just got tired of chewing and eating all the food. So sometimes if I'm at home, if I'm lazy, I just blend it all up and then just slam it, you know? It just makes it easier. Just slam it, bro, it's over quick. Have you had horchata before? Yeah. That's basically like fucking blended rice, bro. So if I eat out, my go-tos are Panda Express and Chipotle. The reason why is because you can still get like similar macros to what I'm eating right now. So like if you go to Panda Express, you can get white rice and grilled chicken. And it's like the same shit as what I'm eating right now, basically. And same thing with Chipotle, you can get rice and chicken or like rice and steak. And then you just don't put like the sour cream and the cheese and like all the bullshit on it. And it's still like, it's different and it still tastes good, but it's, um, it's not that far off of like your normal meals. So those are two of my go-tos just for like, if it's like day-to-day -day thing. Any place you can get meat and rice to eat out, that's where you should be eating out. Make sure you guys take your food of the gods before training. If you don't, then you're gonna suck. Did, did, did you see he just got kicked Here. out of... Um, like take five, from, take five of them, take yeah, five. Just take five and then you're gonna tap everyone today, bro. Yeah, so today we did, um, we did some situational rounds first and it was good today because we had some of the local black belts come in from other gyms. So it was really hard training today. We did some situational training. And then after the situational training, Kyle had me do a 28 minute uh, shark tank with four different people rotating on me every three minutes. So that was tough. Yeah, that was tough. Um, and then after that, we just did a little bit of core work just to make sure we got the six pack looking nice. And then that's it. Really happy Mason is uh, competing again in this rule set, you know, 12 minutes ADCC rules. Mason won the, the trials twice. And uh, it's good that he's um, fighting at these rule sets again because um, it's always good to keep on switching styles, switch rules, so he can keep on improving all rule sets. You know, uh, this improves his jiu-jitsu, makes him evolve quicker. So I'm really excited to watch uh, how he's gonna do and all the things that we have been working because he's putting a lot of time and, and work into jiu-jitsu and um, he's definitely gonna show it in, in this match. There's gonna be a jiu-jitsu tournament during the day and then as soon as the tournament ends, the super fights are gonna start. So if the tournament has, you know, three, 400 competitors and then they have like their families and stuff watching them. A lot of those people are probably gonna stick around and watch the, the grappling matches. So I think it'll be a pretty big crowd. I think it's gonna be big energy, a lot of jujitsu people, um, a lot of uh, the gyms in the area are gonna have people competing. So it's gonna be a lot of hype. The gyms all cheering for their own guys. And um, us the, uh, six that are coming from CTA, we're just gonna have us six. We're not gonna have any friends or fans or teammates with us. So it's kind of going to be us six versus like all of Washington. So yeah, it's going to, or nah, not even Washington, like versus the whole Pacific Northwest, you know, because there's going to be people coming from Portland and Seattle. So yeah, it's, it's going to be dope, man. It's going to be CTA versus the whole Pacific Northwest. It seems to be pretty cool. Uh, I've never been to Spokane, Washington, so I'm excited about that. And, uh, you know, performing under a really cool venue with all my teammates. I mean, you couldn't really ask for a better event, you know, it, when we all go into battle, it, it just feels like you have the support um, when all of your brothers and sisters are kind of there to, to grind with. And we've all been, you know, blood, sweat, and tears on the mats. So um, we're all looking for Ws. Um, we really push each other. We don't allow anyone to have any, uh, lack of a better word, but bitch assness. You know, we really push each other um, to our limits. You know, if I'm, if I'm dogging and, you know, Mason's pushing me and I'm out, a little out of breath or he's, I'm fatigued or something, I'm getting shark tank. You know, they're, they're yelling at us while they're beating our ass. How do you feel about going into enemy territory? 
doesn't bother me. I've always had that underdog situation my whole life, and uh, honestly, I get I get fired up on it. So it, it doesn't bother me one bit going into someone's home territory to take a W. What's up, guys? It's Nathan Mendelson here. I'm third degree black belt from Claudio Franza Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, and I come over here to CTA on the regular to join in on their competition class to help them get ready for their competitions and help me get ready for my own. It's amazing training. Coach Kyle is always here making us do really good specific um, drills for competition situations and pushing us harder than we would push ourselves if we were just training on our own. Um, super high level guys on the mat. Training with Mason is awesome. He's always um, helping me improve my game. And he's, you know, good everywhere. He's good in the guard, good passing, good taking down. It's kind of unfair, like he's huge, but he's also super flexible. That's like, I always tell people like, you should only get to choose one of those. You don't get to have both. You don't get to be super flexible and be huge and strong and be good at passing and be good at the guard, but that's Mason. So it makes it really hard to deal with, but I also feel like it makes my game well too, because I have to be sharp everywhere. So I really appreciate the beat downs that he, he gives me and also all the help that I get from everybody else in CT. So stoked. We'll so Mason specifically is just like uh, pretty much a nightmare <laughs> to, uh, to roll with. He's got a really well-rounded game, really technical, but also a ton of power to back it up. And it reminds me a lot actually when I went to New York City and I rolled with Marcelo Garcia six or seven years ago. It was that same thing where it was like very calm and very controlled, very technical. But then when he goes for the move, when he goes for, let's say, a knee cut, he explodes into that position very quickly. And by the time you can react, he's already in the next, you know, he's already progressed to the next position. And Mason actually is kind of like a better version of, of that, you know, uh, you know, a faster, more explosive, more powerful version of like what it felt like rolling with Marcelo at the time. Jason Kleep, a CrossFit Games champion here. And I'm super fired up for Mason and the entire team to be training and competing at the Spokane Submission Challenge coming up here. You know, the team's been putting the work on the mats, off the mats, hitting the strength, hitting the conditioning. I'm excited to see how it all comes together in the competition. Hey guys, you guys can catch me on September 30th at the Spokane Submission Challenge. Me and five of my teammates, I'll see you guys in Spokane.